Hey you all, and good morning. Got a nice night of sleep here at the Wigwam Village here in Holbrook, Arizona. But now it is time to wake up, and it's time to get back on that road, that one right there, Route 66. We're continuing to head west towards Santa Monica, California. I don't know when we're gonna get there. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Uh, we'll see, see how far I get today. You know, the, the, the days are, are coming close where we're actually going to uh, finish Route 66. I just don't know how long that's gonna take. It's gonna depend on what we run into, how many stops we make along the way, and I tend to make a lot of stops. So, please, follow me. Actually ate at Butterfields last night. It's one of my favorite places to eat when I come into Holbrooks. Here at Geronimo's Trading Post, we have something really cool. See all these teepees amongst the petrified wood here. But this right here, this is the world's largest petrified tree. They don't have the largest petrified tree at the National Park. It's here at the Geronimo Trading Post. So let's take a moment to do our final soda of the day. We bought the six pack of sodas from Pops in Oklahoma, and I've been trying them every day. We have today we have blueberry cream. It's a Blummer's blueberry cream now I've gotten some comments in the comment section that said why are you using a, a bottle opener to open these because they're twist offs that people see that there's a, a swirl on the inside that looks like a twist off but this is not a twist off it, it this is a twist off you guys were right I'm sorry so yes I've been I've been popping the tops instead of twisting them off but in a way I think popping the tops is a little more satisfying. So let's try this. <laughs> I was, that was legitimate. I was thinking I was going to prove a point here to you guys, but you guys, you guys got me. I'm sorry. How embarrassing. Anyways, blueberry cream, blummers. Mmm. Pretty good. It's like a cream soda with blueberry, that tartness mixed with the creaminess. I would say, mm, this is one of the better ones. I've had, I've had to rate them. I think the grape from yesterday is my favorite. But this is a close second. Blummer's Blueberry Cream. With a twist off. And here it is. We finally made it. Here it is. The Jackrabbit Trading Post. And of course, when you refer to it, you gotta be talking about the jackrabbit, the giant jackrabbit here. Families for decades coming and taking their photos, riding the jackrabbit, the, 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 the billboards advertising how many miles it's going to be until they get to see the jackrabbit. Jackrabbit all the way down Route 66. This is it. And there we have the Volkswagen Rabbit. You can see its little bunny nose and bunny ears. So it's still hopping on Route 66. Then up there we got a bunny on a motorcycle. Here's the Route 66 room inside of the Jackrabbit trading post. This looks like a silver tumbleweed. We got a collection of rabbits in here, different rabbits. 
Oh, look at this. Sell little bags of rabbit droppings. Uh oh, there's a little box of baby rattlers here. A little box full of snakes, presumably. Oh, got me. Again, a little Winnie the Pooh rattle there. These are rattlers for babies, not rattlers that are babies. Stopping off with the Flying J here in Winslow, Arizona. The, those appear the gas prices, I don't know, it seems like the further I go west, the uh, higher gas prices go. That's $4.59 a gallon. And here in Winslow, Arizona at Earl's Motor Court, apparently you can sleep on a corner in Winslow, Arizona. Yes, here in Winslow, Arizona, they are very proud of their inclusion in the Eagles song, Take It Easy, which includes the line, standing on a corner in Winslow, Arizona. As you can see, it's a popular tourist attraction here. The statue of a man standing on the corner in Winslow, Arizona. So here's the gentleman standing on the corner. I don't know if that's supposed to be Don Henley because I don't know what Don Henley looks like. And there is a flatbed Ford parked over here as well, although I don't see a, uh, a girl, my lord, inside. This guy back here, he's not standing on the corner. He's actually standing over here by this light post, so uh, he doesn't get as much love. So yes, the statue there, standing on a corner in Winslow, Arizona. And over here we have a very fine sight to see it's a girl, my lord, in a flatbed Ford, slowing down to take a look at me. Come on, baby, don't say maybe. I gotta know if your sweet love is gonna save me. Take it easy, take it easy. Don't let the sound of your own wheels drive you crazy. Oh, and look up here in the windows in Winslow, Arizona. There's a bald eagle on that window, and then two people totally making out in that window. They even have a standing on the corner gift shop across the way. Pretty amazing to have a gift shop dedicated to an individual song. This guy here standing on the corner. Map check time. So yeah, we are we are making some progress. You see right there in Winslow, we're standing on the sidewalk here in Winslow. Got to finish out Arizona and then do California. All right, here on the opposite corner in Winslow, Arizona, we have the sip shop. It says they have Route 66 dogs. See they have an old school vintage soda fountain in here. So here we have the Route 66 hot dogs. We have the Take It Easy dog, which is ketchup, mustard, relish, and onion. That's pretty standard. So I'm probably not gonna get that. All the other hot dogs are actually names of states on Route 66. So I think, uh, I think uh, we'll pick something off of here. That's kind of, each one is uh, specifications to the specific state. Yeah, the Illinois dog is actually a Chicago hot dog, the uh, New Mexico dog has hatched chilies and cream cheese. Mmm, that sounds good. Oh, and then we have the Arizona dog, jalapenos, banana peppers, cheese cucumbers, and spicy aioli. You know, we are in Arizona, so I think we should go with the Arizona dog. <laughs> now this is pretty funny. I didn't catch this at first. The Missouri dog says, not to offend the people of Missouri, we have no idea what they put on their dogs in Missouri. Anyone in Missouri, what is a Missouri hot dog? Leave a comment in the comment section. So this soda fountain, they actually have vintage sodas you don't see too often anymore. So I got a Cherry Lime Ricky Phosphate. Now they said that a phosphate is a chemical that they put in the soda to give it a tart, any tart flavor. So, yeah, I'm not sure. Cherry Lime Ricky, I don't know what makes it a Ricky, not a soda, but I must give it a try. Ooh, wow. Ooh, wow. That phosphate, whatever it is, really makes a pop, really sour pop. It's like sour candy. 
like Sour Patch Kids or War, mm, it almost tastes like a warhead. All right, so here is the Arizona dog. It's got the banana peppers, cucumbers, jalapenos, and some sort of spicy sauce on it. And then over here, we have the New Mexico dog. It's got those chilies and cream cheese. This all might be very spicy, so I'll keep my phosphate handy. All right, there we got the uh, Arizona dog. Mm. It's a good, well, it's just a good hot dog right there. Um, a lot of interesting flavors. Love the banana peppers. Jalapenos are good. Not too spicy yet. Mm. Mm. It's really good. The New Mexico, the New Mexico dog and fries. It's been a long time in New Mexico. And a lot of chilies. We'll see how spicy this one is. Mm. As I said, these are just really good hot dogs. But mm, chili's not too hot. Cream cheese is nice. Mm. Mm. We are both winners. Stopped off here at a classic roadside trading post, the Meteor City trading post with the classic geodesic dome building there. Now this has been abandoned for some time, although I'm seeing some signs of life here on, uh, on the walls. It says visit Route 66 World on Facebook. It says pardon our dust while we're remodeling. Mean, meanwhile visit the Jackrabbit trading post. It's a good suggestion, actually. Oh, and it even advertises to sleep on a corner at uh, Earl's Route 66 Motor Court in Winslow, Arizona. We, we saw that as well. Oh, it looks like they have a Facebook page. I think this was all decrepitly destroyed last time I was here. So it looks like there has been some, some work done. Okay, so yeah, go on Facebook. It says Meteor City Route 66 help us restore by a t-shirt. So yeah, I may go check that out myself. Yeah, I would definitely love to see this be able to reopen. Looks like they even fixed up the world's largest dream catcher here. We've stopped off here at the Meteor Crater Landmark. There's a massive meteor crater behind this building. This is the basket meteorite. This is an actual meteorite here. It says it was stolen from this location in uh, 1968 and uh, it was found being used as a counterweight for a basketball hoop when uh, the guy using it saw it on television and realized that he had the stolen meteor. We have a astronaut there. NASA astronaut, but watch out, look what else we have. A little alien creeping out of the meteor crater. This capsule here was used for space testing and never been to space. The astronauts used it to train for the Apollo missions. So since the last time I came to the meteor crater, they have a new mascot. This is Jackie Lopez, of course that's Jackalope with a Z on it. See the plushie there? They have some Jackie Lopez bottle, bobble heads and some magnets. And there we have a Jackie Lopez t-shirt. Jackie Lopez everywhere here. Okay, so this is a 4D movie starring Jackie Lopez. Biometric security place hand on screen to verify security clearance. Oh. Scanning. Searching. Oh boy, access granted. Okay, some moving seats here. Hello again and welcome aboard. Commander Perseus, any last minute words before departure? Nah, Jackie. I think our crew is ready and excited to get going. leaning back. Oh wow. Flying through the air. 
sliding down the bottom of the crater. Oh, here we go. Oh. oh. Is it the moon? I don't for most of you. This is your first time in space. Pretty amazing, huh? Oh. Oh. We're getting hit by meteors on the on our butts. Oh. Exploded the meteor. So here is the meteor that caused the meteor crater. Well, actually, just a very small fragment of it, but this is the largest fragment they found. All the others, I guess, are smaller. So meteor did come apart when it caused the crater, and this is the largest known chunk. So it talks about different types of meteors here. Here's one from the meteor crater. It's magnetic. There's a stony meteorite that is that is not magnetic. You can see how heavy the meteor is compared to an earth rock. The earth rock, you know, it's a rock. It doesn't weigh that much. But the iron meteorite here is heavier. Much heavier. Oh no. The sky is falling. It talks about some of the examples of meteors striking homes or property. This is a recreation of the Sacaga, Alabama meteor crash. You see it busted through the ceiling and got dust all over their bench. You're not allowed to walk down into the crater, but here's a photo op. You can uh, get your selfie done uh, standing at the bottom of the crater. I'm a meteor. And this is interesting. NASA astronauts actually trained here at the meteor crater because it was similar to the surface of the moon. And so here it is, the meteor crater. It is incredibly enormous. Now I've zoomed into the bottom. This is as far as the camera goes. And I don't know if you can even see, but there is, oh, right there, right above my fingertip there, that is a astronaut. And that is there to show perspective of how big this meteor is. You see that little astronaut. So let's pull out, give you some perspective of how tiny that astronaut is down in the bottom of the meteor crater. That's incredible. Yeah, the size of this thing is hard to grasp. Just imagine the level of impact that would have happened here. Now the other equipment down there is actually mining equipment. The farmer that owned the property actually dug a, uh, a mine in the middle of the meteor crater. He was determined that he was going to find that meteor that caused this crater, but uh, unfortunately it just wasn't down there. Yeah, my first question was, where'd the meteor go? Did it bounce back into space like a Super Bowl? But apparently um, it, uh, it shattered and evaporated, I guess the impact just vaporized most of the meteor. But apparently, you know, like the, the one they showed inside, they did find chunks of the meteor here in the crater. You can see the viewing area there. Some of the people looking out with those telescopes into the crater. We have these telescopes here all locked in place so you can look at different things here on uh, the meteor crater. Here's the six foot tall astronaut. I tried to show it earlier, but let's see through the looking glass there. Oh yeah, do you see him? Do you see him down there? There's another lookout down here. This gas station outside of the Meteor Crater has a geodesic dome shape, much like the uh, Meteor City Trading Post. And we have some more abandonment here alongside Route 66. This uh, gas station here was part of the uh, Two Guns roadside attraction that was here years ago. But as you can see, just total devastation here. Every bit has been either destroyed or covered with graffiti. This will be the garage in here. 
Yeah, you can see it's just completely coated with graffiti inside. Here's the abandoned Two Gun Zoo. You see it still says Mountain Lions over the top there. So they definitely would have had Mountain Lions as part of the attraction here. Walk into the old, old stone zoo here. You can see the old pens are still here from the zoo. It's like a little chicken wire enclosure. So I don't know what animals were in each enclosure. Yeah, you can see some fairly primitive animal enclosures there. Sort of, I don't know which one the mountain lions would have been in. Yeah, probably have some different variety of animals here. Visitors can come up to the chicken wire and see them. So you look down here into Diablo Canyon. You see the bridge cutting across Diablo Canyon there, and you can see some ruins. These are genuine ruins. Old uh, old town that was here in uh, in this part of Arizona, but they actually would take these old buildings and repurpose them as a amusement park where you know they had cowboys and whatnot. So little cowboys. A little bit, a few animals, and you have yourself a roadside attraction. See some of the ruins here of the old town slash roadside attraction. Probably one of the most notorious locations here at Two Guns is this right here, the Apache Death Cave. Apparently the uh, Navajo Indians, they would they put their women and children in this cave to protect them from the Apache, but the Apache uh, found where they were hiding and sealed the cave and set it on fire to kill all the women and children. So very horrific location here, the Apache Death Cave. Now I've actually been in the cave before, believe it or not. Um, that ladder, you walk across there, walk down that ladder, that ladder was in better shape last time I saw it. It's been crushed by rocks. Looks like some rocks have rolled onto the ladder and busted it out. So I will choose not to go down into the Apache Death Cave today. This stone building here up above the Apache Death Cave. I guess we could take a little peek inside here. Unfortunately, people have graffito tagged it. Yeah, it looks like more graffiti on the inside. Again, I have nothing against the art form of graffiti, but you know, there's a time and place for it. We've stopped off here at the Twin Arrows Trading Post, one of the uh, more iconic sites on Route 66, to be honest. You see the that iconic arrow jutting out of the ground up in to the sky, but this really, this really makes me sad. The second arrow, here of the Twin Arrows, has fallen down. And uh, you see there, originally telephone poles propped up, and uh, yeah, it even looks like the arrowhead part has been destroyed or taken, and man, man, I just, you, you think about the, the, the Twin Arrows. They're, they're, they're one of the most iconic images on Route 66, and Route 66 murals, paintings, postcards. You see the two, uh, the twin arrows in those images. I've even seen uh, homages to the, to the twin arrows on this very trip. The, uh, the Route 66 casino outside of Albuquerque had uh, arrows coming out of the ground as a way to pay homage. Um, it's just sad, it's just sad that something is so iconic in imagery, in Americana imagery, but the actual physical objects themselves have been left to rot. I think the trading post here, I think it's been closed a long time. I think it's been since the 90s. So really they have been sitting out here in the elements for a very, very long time. But man, I wish, I wish that could be restored. I know it's easy to say that. It's easy to say I wish someone else would come along and fix this. Um, but you know, sometimes there is other Route 66 attractions that have fallen into disrepair and later been uh, 
fixed up. So hopefully, um, hopefully, maybe at some point this can be uh, be fixed up. I just hate to see it. Hate to see uh, one of the twin arrows laying on the ground like that. As I said, the trading post, the gas station have just been closed forever here. You see, again with the graffiti, I hate to keep bringing it up. Like, in some parts of the country, when stuff gets abandoned, the weather will destroy it. Like, in, in, in the south, it'll get covered in vegetation and destroyed. But out here in the desert, you don't have that natural uh, level of destruction with the rain and the, uh, the plant life. But you just, anything that sits abandoned for five minutes out here in the desert just gets completely covered with graffiti. Is that who I think it is? Uh, someone left their super comfy chair back here. See, this part would have been a diner. You can kind of make it out by the shape. And it looks like we can peek in the window here. They do have some remnants of the old kitchen there. Some different pieces of uh, kitchen equipment. Imagine it would have been like a small diner. You'd come up and they'd cook behind behind the, the, t t the counter there. gas pumps there covered in stickers see the innards oh look at this next to me the train transporting those are all tanks it's a big train full of tanks stopped off in Flagstaff Arizona you're here at the Museum Club. There's a tree, bending of a tree around the entrance. This is supposedly the world's largest log cabin. I guess we can peek inside. See, it's a bar inside here. It's a lot of taxidermy hanging up in the rafters. Yeah, you can see a lot of antlers up there in the trees. Sneaky old mountain lion there. And then a grumpy old bear. We're here on the campus of North Arizona University in front of the Sky Dome. And check this out, we have a Bunyan Muffler Man. However, this Bunyan Muffler Man is actually very special. It is believed that this is the very first Muffler Man ever produced and installed at a business. He was originally uh, at a restaurant here in Flagstaff, but uh, has been moved over here to the university and apparently he actually appeared in the movie Easy Rider. And also, there is a giant pile of dirty, <laughs> dirty snow right there. It's a big pile of snow, Paul. It says hostile territory ahead, shotguns ready. This truck here, with antlers on the front, and oh my gosh, it's being driven by a skeleton. Oh, there's a rattlesnake down there too. It says world famous Sultana Bar. Got a little pappy here on the street corner. It just says don't sit on him. Whoa! The colors of the West. I'm dusty. We've got so many t shirts, furry, and custom license plates. Why, we even got shot glasses. Basically, we've got a souvenir to delight everyone in your family. Come on in. A gift shop here called Addicted to 66, and it is home of the world's largest steel Route 66 shield. So we should head inside, check that out. It was like a little Route 66 leading us in. And here it is. 
the world's largest Route 66 shield. It's pretty big. You can use me for reference. See? That is a big Route 66 shield right there. Oh, we got an Elvis fortune teller known as the King. It says, tells y'all. Let's give Elvis a dollar so he can tell us our fortune. Waving his hand there over the crystal bra. Listen closely to my instruction now. Hard work pays off over time, but laziness, it pays off right now. Heed my advice, young one. Relax and enjoy yourself today, just like an old hound dog. You deserve it. And come back with more Relax coins. like an old hound dog. More timeless truths from the king of rock and roll. All right. So it's about time to grab some dinner. I think we'll get something to eat here at Cruisers. Cafe 66. Little homage to the Jackrabbit Trading Post we saw this morning. We've got Elvis over here greeting us. Oh, they have one of these straw dispensers here. You pull them, you pull them up. It's, it's jammed shut. Oh. All right, I just embarrassed myself, but anyway. There's a straw, and then you just put the lid back on. It doesn't do anything fancy like I thought it did. So they primarily have burgers and barbecue here, and I got the three sausage meal. Came with coleslaw, potato salad, and beans. All right, let's tear into these sausages. A little barbecue sauce in there. We're gonna be staying here tonight, right on Route 66, here at the Canyon Country Inn. This is a small uh, family-owned uh, motel, and I looked it up online, it had uh, really good ratings. Uh, the ratings said it was very clean, and it was also uh, very inexpensive, so we will uh, check it out. All right, we're gonna be in room 103. I've got the key right here. And we'll do the great room reveal. Oh, okay. Got a comfy little bed there. A little side table. Yeah, a smaller room, but I've been used to smaller rooms on this trip. So yeah, very nice. Let's uh, check the bathroom. We can hit the lights. Okay, got a bathtub, toilet, and a sink. So thank you for joining me here for another day on Route 66 as the end of our trip draws a little nearer. I'm not sure how near, because we're in Williams, Arizona tonight. I'm sleeping here in Williams, Arizona. And Williams, Arizona is known as the gateway to the Grand Canyon. Now, I've been to the Grand Canyon twice, technically. Both times, they had zero visibility. I think I might go check out the Grand Canyon tomorrow. I'd really like to see it, and um, I don't know. I, I will check check first to see what the visibility is, and then maybe third time will be a charm, and we will make it out to the Grand Canyon. Uh, thank you so much again. Uh, I appreciate all your support in allowing me to do these adventures and this current adventure here on Route 66. Uh, if you'd like to help support the channel, consider donating to Patreon. $3 or more will get you a postcard once a month. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop. All that helps keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, this dirigible in the air. Until tomorrow morning, my friends, this one's in the bag.